Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts, mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. The Iceman Otzi Urk Awund. Contact Report 238. The next thing will happen in the Yurtstal Mountains, on the Simalon Glacier. There, the mummified remains, or more precisely, the mummified corpse of a man will be found who has lost his life there five hundred and five years ago and was preserved by nature's forces. His death happened at that time in such a way that he fell, note by C.F., not just from standing to the ground, but some distance down, caused by an epileptic fit and was severely injured by one of his own arrows when he fell on his back, just at the moment when a primeval ice storm started. As a member of a group of fourteen persons who had camped there in the mountains, he was left laying on the ground because of his critical injury. Since the remaining thirteen human beings were fully occupied with saving their own lives, they did not care for him. Nevertheless, not all of them survived, as several of them died in the ice needle storm. The storm covered the mountains under a thick layer of ice, and in it the corpse of the fallen one remained mummified and preserved until today, so it he. The corpse will be found this year around the 20th of September by a mountain hiker, together with his equipment, like clothes and weapons, etc., Fantastic. Do you also know what the man and his comrades wanted to do on the mountain, and who the man was, and where he came from? Certainly I can give you precise information. His name was Urk, and he belonged to the Sib of the Surin plural, to a tribal community which lived on pile dwellings. This was in Switzerland and before the time when the Vikings were settling in central Switzerland and the other parts of Switzerland. The pile dwellings of the tribal community of the Surin were located in the banks of Lake Zurich, from where they took long expeditions which led them to the Mediterranean Sea and to the North Sea, to the Atlantic Ocean, and even to the Bosporus. At his death, Urk was exactly thirty-seven years and eight months old, and to be exact, seventeen days. The reason why he and his group was so far away from home in the Oesdal Mountains was that he, as the chief of his sib and as an influential man, was in connection with our forebearers. Through them, he gained certain knowledge and lived, just as all members of his entire sibi, according to certain rules of our making. Thus, they obeyed the hygienic rules which had been put up by us at much earlier times, which also related to the removal of unhygienic body hair growth. After having been informed by our forebearers about the wideness of the countries in the east, many of the Sib of the Surin felt an urge for the east. That's why they set off under the guidance of their tribal chief, Urk, to discover the faraway countries and to find valuable material, like crystals and ore in accordance with that time, and flints and all kind of other things. You could say then that this Urk was an original Swiss, so to say, whereby his mummified body would be brought to Switzerland. Research will surely be done on him. What then would righteously be the task of Swiss scientists, isn't it? If looked at it from a legal angle, it would have to be that way, that's right. However, neither the Austrians nor the Italians will be drawn into this, and they will mutually claim the right on the mummified body because there will be border disputes regarding the location where the corpse will be found. Of course, they wouldn't pay any attention to my words and would call you a charlatan cheat and liar who would have purely invented my explanations if you or someone else would make some claim on the mummy in the name of Switzerland. That's clear to me. But why, that's my question. Were your forebearers in contact with this Urk, and of what kind were they? The contact resulted from an unwanted stroke of fate when a flying device of our forebearers had an accident. 
Irk observed the emergency landing of the device and saved the life of two crew members when they, while exploring the surroundings, were attacked by a big bear and were severely injured, without having any chance to defend themselves in the first place. From this happening resulted a deep friendship between Irk and the two space travelers, and so human beings of a still very primitive kind and very advanced form formed a very uncommon alliance. Irk, who was naturally gifted and contrary to his sib comrade's very understanding and knowing to a good extent, learned fast and became the leader of his sib within less than three years. According to the standards of that time, he was wealthy and influential to a great degree, whereby it was helpful that it was frequently observed that the flying devices were landing or starting, with whose passengers Irk liked to have long talks, and since he was often taken into the flying devices for trips to somewhere. At what age did he become the chief of the Essib? And why didn't your forebearers help him in that blizzard? He was nearly twenty-one years old when he became the leader of his sib. My answer to your second question is that our forebearers were not present when death came upon him, because they were occupied elsewhere and were absent for more than eighteen years. When they returned, Irk was already buried deep beneath the ice, and they let him lay there. Irk, as you said, is the name of an ancient dead man who will be found in the Ötztal in the Austrian mountains. Do you know anything about whether the scientists will recognize his age, and also whether they will find out how long Irk will have been there? I ask because Quetzal once explained that very precise old analyses with the conventional methods available to terrestrial man are very doubtful. The man was 37 years, 8 months, and 17 days old, and he died 5,105 years ago, I told you already. Your assumption is correct. However, that the time of his death is incorrectly calculated by the inadequate and erroneous methods of age determination of materials of every kind. Because atomic changes occur when a certain sum of years is exceeded before which most plants and materials on Earth have changed so much due to cosmic radioactive influences that by the radiocarbon method false results up to well over a thousand years in the age determination occur when the content of radioactive carbon is measured. Depending on the level of radioactive carbon more or less, depending on whether the substance to be examined is younger or older than a thousand years, or older than some more than twenty-six hundred years, which will appear in the case of Irk, whereby the earthly scientists will actually obtain a false result in the age determination, which should amount to about 50 to 70 years. If I understand correctly, then age determinations can be made very precisely with the radiocarbon method up to an age of 1,000 years, according to which then for the next 1,600 years a somewhat stable result can be achieved according to which then, however false results of up to 1,000 years can appear, so something more than after an age of 2,600 years upwards, because cosmic radioactive influences change the atomic and or radioactive structures of the earthly organic and other materials. That was the meaning of my explanation. Contact Report 240 My first question refers to Irk. According to your explanations, he belonged to the family of the Suras. We've been trying for months to find something about these Suras. During our search, we found out that there is a surname Surin Man in Switzerland, and also the name Schur or Sur. Also Surenbach and Surenalp, etc., are names or designations, which appear quite frequently. As a rule, these names and designations are associated with the Low German and Swiss German term Sur or Sour. But somehow this doesn't seem logical to me, because I can hardly imagine that Irk's clan, the Suren, were called the Sauren, so to speak. I cannot find a plausible explanation for this. Could you perhaps explain to me what the term Suren meant in Irk's time, and what we have to understand by it today? The explanation for this is not subject to any secrecy. 
Surin is an ancient Celtic term that has also become established in various other languages, including all Germanic Germanic languages. The original term Shur literally means Sumpef, and Shurin were the names of those people who settled in swampy terrain. They built pile dwellings in the swamp area and lived there, which is why they were called Surin, swamp dwellers. Sure, however, the swamp was called because the ground was acidic, according to the old Celtic term, sur. The family name, Shurinman, now leads back in the direct lineage to the old Surin, namely in the form that the inhabitants were called men and women from the Surin, which later resulted in the names Surinman and Surinfrau, of which, as far as I know, only the masculine name is still in use today. The name Surinalp originated from the fact that the terrain was marshy, according to which some falp would be said in today's language. It is the same with the name Surinbach, which would be called Sumpfbach in today's language. Then the designations Esur or Sour in this context actually only have the meaning or the value that they were word values for the acid swamp soil? That is correct. Well, then to the second part of the question. Sure, doesn't that have another value as well? During my research, I came across the fact that the terms courage and daring must also be connected with this word. That is also correct. A single member of the suras was called sura, but not only because it meant a single member of the suras, but because it also meant courage and boldness. The languages of those times were still very sparse in many respects, and thus also with regard to different terms. The swamp dwellers, the Suren, were regarded as very brave and bold because of their pile dwellings, which is why they were also called Shur Suren, thus as bold and courageous swamp dwellers. Understood. Then the Sura in the Qumran has nothing to do with it? No. Then it's just a word value in Arabic for the term chapter. Certainly. Can you tell me what the name Urk means? Hans found out that in Holland there is a place by the sea called Urk. Urk has the meaning of the steadfast. And the island or the place that was an island in Holland? Now the former island has become the mainland. Also the meaning for this case is the same, steadfastness an island that stood firm against wind, storm, and sea. Contact Report 347 You hear, this article has been in the newspaper. It is about Urk. What these specialists have found out is indeed astonishing, but the assumption does not correspond to the facts that Urk was involved in a battle. The truth is, that Urk and thirteen companions observed a life-and-death battle on the mountains of the Utztal Valley between six human beings of two rival groups or tribes who were killing each other. When they were dead or dying, Urk and his companions ventured out of their hiding place and tried to save the dying, but they were unsuccessful. And since Urk's weapons were already quite damaged from years of use, he partly took possession of the weapons and clothes of the already dead, as well as of those who died under his and his companions' helping hands. Urk himself was indeed not involved in the battle, neither were his companions, and was not murdered, for he was indeed killed by an unfortunate fall during an epileptic seizure in which one of the arrows he had captured penetrated his body, and he was left to his fate by his companions several of whom also lost their lives in the storm. This is the real truth about Urk's death. Contact Report 367 A question about the so-called Utsi Urk, which means the steadfast one. This name seems a bit strange to me, as if it wasn't of earthly origin. Was that really his real name, or was it given to him by your ancestors? The name Urk is actually derived from the Playaren name. Urk's real name was Ande, but the meaning of this name is unknown to me. 
And before you ask, which will be inevitable, let me also say that the female name is Urka. Contact Report 451 It is strange that scientists now believe that Urk was not alone and that a raid or something went down. It just seems to me that our contact talks play a crucial role in this, since they talk about Urk being on the road with 13 companions and that everyone witnessed a life-or-death struggle between two other rival groups with a number of deaths. It seems very suspicious to me that those who are tracking down Urk are now suddenly taking up our discussed facts and talking about the fact that Urk was not alone. Very odd. Actually, it seems strange to me that people are now talking about Urk not being alone. One more question. Why was only Urk's body found on in or near the Similano Glacier when several humans lost their lives there? How many were there altogether? Do you know that? The number of the dead besides Urk was another six. Although the bodies were slightly covered up in the ice storm, they were taken by their relatives at a later time before they were dragged away by wild, carnivorous mountain animals and could serve them as food. Only Urk's body remained untouched by them, because his companions left him lying there and simply buried him under ice flows, which spared him from the predators. Contact Report 555 Now I have a question about Urk the Lake Zurich pile dweller who was killed in the Austrian Utztal Mountains. It must have been five or six years ago now, when after an official contact conversation, we discussed some special things in private, and then the speech also came to Urk, and you explained that he was actually a descendant of a southerner who left his southern homeland with his son Urk and moved north across the Alps, where he settled with lake dwellers on Lake Zurich, who accepted both into their clan. However. Since our conversation was, among other things that were discussed, of a private nature, your statement in this regard is of course not written down. You also did not explain at the time why Urk and his father were actually recognized and accepted as strangers by the Lake Dwellers clan. That was certainly not usual. And how did it happen that Urk then became the clan leader? And how did it come about that he undertook long journeys? which also led him to Austria for the last time, to the Utztal Alps in Similaun, where he died. That would interest me. Urk, whose real name was Onde, and his father left their homeland after Urk's mother died, and the father was a human being who constantly crossed over to the mainland and made major journeys that took him as far north as Lake Zurich, where he traded with the pile farmers. So he was well known to them, and was taken in by them together with Urk when they asked for admission after the death of Urk's mother. The fact that Urk's father risked his life in an emergency situation for the pile dwellers also contributed to their acceptance. As an original southern island dweller, Urk's father was also familiar with good fishing methods, so he taught these and other skills to the clan members which led to his being appointed as successor when the clan leader died. Unfortunately, he also died less than two years later, so Urk was appointed the new leader as a result of a new regulation. Like his father, however, he was constantly and often for many months on the road, usually together with other clan members, to trade with other clans. This was also how he came to the Utztal Alps, where he died. 